We destroy with one hand what we created with the other one, huh? Is that what we're doing now? Destroying our own creation? Hey audience, I'm back with another episode. Let's just start, shall we? You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Pick something here. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like, video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about, and I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just, I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Okay, yep, yeah. yeah, this is too dark for some people, I don't know. Maybe some people don't get it, maybe some people just straight up uh, like, hey, I don't get this, and it's okay. If you don't understand the meaning behind the game, it's completely understandable if you don't relate to this kind of creating stuff and I think the friend I think the friend of like the narrator is a girl because they've been referring to the character now a lot as a girl you can begin to interrogate when I intend to be quick and tend to be quiet
And of course, it's the machine. that can hurt the machine is and I'm not quite sure what the machine is yet I think it might be motivation I'm not too sure I don't know what the machine is. Oh no. Stage phobia. Activates again. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. What? You destroy with one hand what you created with the other one, huh? Is that what we're doing now? Destroying our own creation? So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head and that it's having a very negative effect on him and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work. Why do you say him? To get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback. So, what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. I 
don't want to do this. I don't want to do it. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? I have no other option. Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something, I really felt like I'd done something good. Like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. Um. Yeah. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. This room actually has a maze in it. Oh Jesus, what the fuck? Except that what all the, the walls fuck? of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? Man, don't make me think. I'm not gonna sleep at night if you continue like this. The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like the Invisible Maze, it's frustrating to me, because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. A farm? Oh. What does this code mean? 15? 16, 17. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Fucking great.
The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? You know, I don't know why I would be, it's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed, and I don't understand why. You failed miserably. I remember, it's June of 2011, I'm playing this for the very first time, and as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. The three dots... Flashback incoming, boys! Because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. I don't trust those three dots right there. I told you! I told you it was important! Since freaking episode one, I knew it! I knew the three dots were important. I knew it. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left, and it felt somehow like I had failed. Like you failed miserably. That's, that's so great. Many people, I can imagine a lot Where of viewers. Where did I screw up? I can imagine a lot of viewers being like, what the hell is this game? What are they even talking about? It's like, you need to think a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Try to use your brain. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. Oh, now that part I didn't understand. What did you do? What have you done? You destroyed an artist. Thanks for your interest in my games. I need to ask you not to speak to me anymore. 